region and as a metro it's the it's at the center it's where the heat is at the moment uh, one of the reasons when we were doing the analysis before christmas we saw we had of the young people the matriculants who attended the raid the raid that rage event in Durban, the largest number from Gauteng, we had over 1,300 from Gauteng who attended that event, the largest number came from Twani. So we already saw that uh, Twani is going to be hardest hit, but we also had unfortunate events in the run-up to Christmas. Uh, events that uh, were a flagrant violation of the regulations. Amongst young people we saw on the R80, the R80 was blocked, there was a party on the... The R80 is the road from Karankua Mabopani in the north, passing through Soshanguve into the CBD. We know that's an event that the law enforcement agencies had to intervene, including the blocking of the tunnel, where young people were having... They were partying just from uh, the 16th of December. When the level three adjusted was introduced from the 29th, a lot of those events stopped. But the impact of what we are seeing now, when we say that the province is basically uh, becoming the epicenter of the second wave, by all accounts, and it's something we said, after festive season, Gauteng is going to be next. But a lot of what we are feeling now, what we are seeing, the impact, is a result of what happened before the introduction of Level 3 in the run-up to Christmas. Uh, as I say also, that the, there's also evidence of the impact of, of uh, uh, the matriculants who attended the the event in KwaZulu Natal, the largest number came from Trani. We also want to say just in the last seven days, the admissions, we have had a relatively low admission numbers uh, right up to New Year, and we were assisted a great deal with the restrictions on alcohol. A lot of our trauma beds were vacant. Uh, they still, at the moment, uh, not many trauma patients, but in some instances they are there. Even with the restrictions in some areas they are there. So we were assisted a great deal. But let me say to you that in the la just in the last seven days, the numbers, the admission numbers in our hospitals have doubled everywhere in the last seven days. They have doubled everywhere. Whereas uh, uh, we would have had towards the end of December, the numbers ranging from 100 patients, now they are ranging above 200 uh, patients in various facilities. So Steve Biko is a cluster. So this hospital coordinates several hospitals in this district, in this, in this metro. It is a cluster. There are several hospitals linked to it. Uh, there's also another cluster in Swan, which is the George Mukari in the northwestern side, Harangua. That is where uh, Harangua is and the, the, the University of Sefako Mahatu is. So we have cluster, clusters of major hospitals that are coordinating the district hospitals because those have better, they have better facility, they are centers of excellence, they, they, are, they have better skilled, they can treat, particularly attend to critical patients, to critical care, they have better facilities, but they work in conjunction with the, the, the district hospitals. So one of the things since the return, one of the things is that people tend to arrive here, uh, this is at the center, you know, uh, Steve Biko is at the center. People, some of the people who are, who, who are coming as far as Karankua, where we have a complex that's managing, tend to arrive here. And that's what happened Sunday. The Sunday where we had 
a large number of people arriving at the same time. That's the video that's circulating, which led to the managers at this hospital, the CEO and her team making a decision in line with the regulation the regulations and guidelines of how the province manages numbers, uh, decided that when we have suddenly had so many people arriving, we were having the number of patients were not as we, we have had before. Suddenly a lot of people arrived at once. They had to make a plan. And fever tents, that's what you see here. They are called fever tents. Fever tents were part of our response very well. They helped a lot during the response to the first wave, especially at the peak of the first wave. So there are people who arrive here. A lot of them are called PUIs. These are patients or persons under investigation. They, their results have not yet been confirmed. They may be sick. They, they have symptoms. They would say to, be saying to doctors, I've got this. But a lot of the people who arrive here have not been tested. They get tested and they got, before the doctors decide where to refer them, they've got to get the first initial, they get tested here and they have to wait the, to, to await their results, uh, including decisions by the doctors about referral, whether they need to be going to a general bed or they need to be taken to an ICU bed or any critical care, whether they need to be put on oxygen and all the related issues. So they arrived here. So we use fever tents across the province uh, as areas where P PUIs are put. Uh, and they, in the meantime, also they have to receive some treatment. If someone comes here and say they have a breathing problem, even if the results, they, they, they've just been tested and the results are being awaited, they must be treated. That's why some of the people you see here, they are already receiving attention. But, but they, they must be, they must be a, a waiting period and the CEO will be able to explain to us. Uh, but in a period where the numbers are doubling almost every day, and I'm saying to you, in the last seven days, the numbers will increase. Uh, they have been increasing in the last seven days, doubling hospital admissions. At the, with regard to infections, we are just where we were at the peak of the first wave. You remember mid-July? Counting was at 6,500. The highest daily infection rate was 6,500. Currently, there are just over three, four days. The infection rate has been between 6,200 up to 6,900. So, as we speak at the moment, we are we are just where we were at the peak of the first wave, and we are passing that peak. All models are telling us, and you have listened to the minister, and you have also listened to the president, that the, the second wave or the resurgence may be more than the, the first wave. That is something the evidence is already showing. Uh, in terms of the infection, the, because, because the, the new variant is more infectious, other questions about the severity are still being investigated. But not only in Swani, also in Johannesburg, we are monitoring all the numbers, admissions in our hospital. In the last seven days, admissions in public hospitals in Gauteng uh, increased from around 700 in public hospitals to, two, to above 2,000 just in the last seven days. Uh, if you combine public and private hospitals, the admissions are now above 4,000. About 4,500 admissions in Gauteng hospitals. Let me remind you where we were. At the peak of the first wave, we had 7,000 admissions in Gauteng. So the total number of admissions at the peak mid-July to later in July the highest number of admissions was 7,100 in public and private hospitals in Gauteng province. 
I need to just make sure my mask is really okay. So where are we at the moment? We are about 4,500. Uh, so 4,400. Uh, the, the private hospitals were always ahead of the public hospitals. Earlier in the week, when I checked on Monday, we had just around 700 admissions in public hospitals and close to 2,000 in private hospitals. The private hospitals were already feeling the pressure. Uh, just from the beginning of this week, they were feeling the pressure. But the public hospitals now are at the same level uh, because we have, we have uh, more than 2,200 in the, in the public and more than 2,200 in the private uh, hospitals. Uh, so the, the exact accurate number is something we will, we will give when we do a media briefing tomorrow. We, we, we have decided we will do a more detailed media briefing tomorrow because we are just waiting for the president. Uh, there have been a series of meetings. The president is going to speak first, and uh, we have been shifting our media briefing to, to speak after the president. Our media briefing will definitely be tomorrow. We'll confirm the time once we know when the president is going to speak. So <clears throat> what is our response to the fact that the second wave uh, is showing an indication of doubling the numbers. What is our response? Certainly we have more beds than we had now than anywhere before the pandemic. Even here in Swani, we have more beds. We have here, Steve Biko is a complex. There is Swani District Hospital that is linked to Steve Biko which was a mother and child, it, was, it has been converted into a specialized COVID hospital. Uh, it has uh, uh, the total number of beds in that hospital is, is nine, 95. 95 is 200 bedded hospital, but 95 are for COVID. At the moment, it's not full. There's 43, 43 patients, but we are sorting because we, when the the COVID infections and admissions started to go down after the first wave. Correctly speaking, the, the, the leadership of this complex decided because patients, COVID patients are fewer, they must open that hospital for other patients. So they've been treating other patients there. What, are, what is the provincial health department doing with the institutions? We are now going back to full 95 COVID beds in a number of areas where we had opened up for, for allowing, we are going to be scaling down what other uh, medical uh, services and health services will be provided to prioritize, not shut down other mm -hmm. services completely, but to pro prioritize COVID patients. That's a matter that the department, the MEC is addressing this matter. Uh, together with, we also have to get the unions on board because the unions are a very important partner. But we are also looking at, uh, in many areas, we had, we had also healthcare workers who were put on contract in preparation for the first wave, in anticipation for the model that showed that in 2021. Uh, the country would be at a certain level. You know that the, the, the discovery of the new variant is getting us to revise even the model. So the, even the, the contract workers, the, the nurses and the allied health professionals, the doctors and other health professionals who were brought into the system for the first wave whose contract may be ending at the end of March. As a province, we are really looking into, into that because it's clear that uh, we are going to have COVID more than what the earlier models had anticipated. So we are dealing with those issues. We are also paying attention to field hospitals. You know what we did in Gauteng. We didn't build separate field hospitals except one field hospital, Nazareth. In many hospitals, we have just been adding, we have been adding beds, uh, adding 
putting in additional complexes with alternative technologies. So we have been able to bring additional beds that have helped us to cope so far, but we know that because the second wave may be more double the first wave, uh, we must also plan ahead. What does this mean? One of the things we are doing is that we are going back to Nazrek. You know, Nazrek as a field hospital did not admit a lot of people during the first wave. In other words, our healthcare system was able to cope in Gauteng with the first wave. We never reached a point where there were, there were patients who could not, we all, in fact, we were worried that there are no patients or there are fewer patients at, at Nazareth. Even as I speak now, at Nazareth we've got 500 beds for who, which will be able to do critical care and 500 beds for quarantine. But even those, the admission at Nazareth is still lower. Uh, <coughs> MEC, I think the combined figure including PUIs at Nazareth earlier in the week was about, was just over 300. 308, 302. So, and that includes those for out of a thousand beds. But this is our plan. In two days, we are able to add another 500 beds in Nazareth, which will have oxygen because we had, in the first wave, we had a thousand beds with oxygen. We downscaled when the pandemic was the infection rate was going down and the admissions were lower. We downscaled from 1,000 to 500. So we, to bring up the other 500 to 1,000 takes only two days. So the instruction is already out that that five, other 500 at Nazareth must come in. But we are also ready to, to keep increasing Nazareth. This is the report we have given. I spoke to the president. Uh, also uh, myself as the Premier, that we took a decision that Nazareth must not be closed. We know we were criticized that as a field hospital, we don't know what will happen ahead. We're criticized, uh, especially by the opposition, that we should close Nazareth at that time. We took a decision that we rather downscale the numbers than close it. We didn't close it completely. We downscaled the numbers by 50%. But we are able to increase Nazarek by another 500 and another 500. So that's what we are going to be. Nazarek is not dealing only with people from the south. It is a facility that is also for referrals. We have added additional beds at Jubilee Hospital in the north, in Hamanskral. We, we have added additional beds. We built 300 beds there. Jubilee works with George Mukari. There are additional beds at George Mukari. The problem that Steve Biko has been having is that there are a lot of PUIs here. Now, you know, I've said what are the PUIs. These are people who have to wait, come here, wait for their results. They test, they wait for their results, and a decision about where, when to transfer them to which or what type of care they need gets taken afterwards. We want Steve Biko mm -hmm. to be a point of patients who are critical. So a lot of these PUIs that wait here will, will also be referred to the other facilities. Let me conclude by saying in the east of, of Tani, in Brongos Prate, we have worked with BMW there. We are just completing 150 beds uh, at Brongor Spray Hospital. Those 150 beds, we have worked in partnership with a BMW. Those 100, they are just doing the final touches of that. Those 100 beds will be very helpful. We don't have lots of admissions in the East in hospital, but they will be helpful for referral for, from Mami Lodi. What they need is the support by the top clinicians and experienced nurses from uh, this whole complex and cluster supported by uh, by Steve Biko. So, so the beds are there, but we, we are now working as the provincial government uh, with the National Department of Health 
to ensure that uh, even on the side of uh, additional capacity that can be done. So we, we had prepared for the period in January when people returned that the numbers are going to increase, but the increases are happening much faster and the numbers are much higher. Even our modeling team, our advisory council on COVID, the group of scientists and model, the modeling team there are saying to us, we can see that the second wave is going to be much bigger. So that's what we are. Oh, so I want to say to the people of Houten, the next two weeks are going to be difficult. On the side of government, we are doing everything in our power, uh, working with our healthcare workers, and in some instances, law enforcement agencies to enforce the regulations. Uh, we are working with our health of officials uh, on the ground to support them. But COVID-19 cannot be won. The battle against COVID-19 cannot be won just by government and the healthcare workers alone. We need a great deal of citizen participation. We need a great deal of citizen cooperation. We need a great deal of citizen collaboration and civil society is also central in that. It's something that we can do together. Uh, and I want to continue to appeal that organized communities, including the religious sector, seeing what is happening now, please work with us. Let us, those who are funerals are still a big problem in terms of complying with the regulations of 50 people, but also not taking someone who has passed on COVID-19 must not be brought home. So we are appealing to the people of our province, events as according to the restrictions announced on the 29th of December, all the events that some, there are people who are still trying, but the law enforcement agencies have been working very hard in our province. Uh, they have stopped a lot of events that were being organized. Uh, that includes the, uh, the transportation of alcohol and also activities where uh, alcohol is being uh, home-brewed. Uh, the home-brewed stuff that, that gets done and then gets distributed. This is really about uh, saving more lives. Uh, the rest of the issues, I think, uh, we are waiting, we await what the National uh, Coronavirus Command Council is going to say. We are, are awaiting that, but our message is that in Gauteng now, uh, we are in the eye of the storm of the second wave. Every number indicates that. Uh, people who are arriving back, let me also say here at Steve Biko, we, uh, we have also we have also been admitting people who have South Africans and fellow, fellow citizens who have come from neighboring provinces like Mpumalanga, Limpopo, and the Northwest. And a lot of them just bring themselves here uh, without any referral. And that's what the hospital has been dealing with. This is a very well-known hospital. Uh, sometimes they are also... Uh, uh, people who are arriving at this hospital from other parts of the, the country uh, and uh, also in the Sadek region who arrived here. You must know what, that the hospital uh, look at, they attend to everyone who needs attention. Their fundamental question is to save life. When, they, when people arrive here, that's why sometimes they have to keep them uh, in the fever tents their immediate worry is uh, what is their condition and how can we help them even before we could get their results confirmed. But I want to say too many people are arriving at Steve Biko. There are other facilities. Uh, the province is not nece necessarily at 100%. I've just said to you that we, our admission rate is still less than where we were at the peak, but Every day the numbers are doubling. So by the end of this week, uh, we may be at a different place. And, and a lot of what, what 
what is happening is a result of what has happened prior to Christmas, in the run-up to Christmas, where people let off the guard. I want to appeal uh, to the people of our province, uh, many of whom are returning to work. I want to appeal that uh, let's do all the things that we can to ensure that we can manage where we are now, that is level three, uh, and ensure we continue to revive the economy. But our facilities in the last seven days have been uh, coming tremendously under pressure. And we see this continuing, this trend continuing in the next week and in the week thereafter. So any questions? Thank you very much, uh, Premier. Uh, colleagues, let's just uh, say who we are and where we come from. So you yourself, yourself, and yourself, and then yourself is And number four. First one, two, three, four. You can show me. Uh, good morning, Premier. It's uh, Victoria's ETA. Um, just looking at healthcare workers, um, uh, just looking at infection rates on healthcare workers, and also um, uh, is there an update on the second wave uh, on infections on, on healthcare workers uh, in the province? And also, if there's maybe an update on uh, if there is a death rate. Okay, can I just deal with with that uh, one by one? <clears throat> yeah, I can confirm that the healthcare system is also feeling pressure about the number of frontline staff that are, are infected. Let me just say that including the police, a number of our police stations now are under pressure because police officers who have been in law enforcement operations throughout this, the festive season, as you know, they are on all over the province. We have more police officers. The numbers, I will release them tomorrow at the media briefing, the exact numbers. We have more police officers. With regard to the healthcare professionals, yes, we also receiving an indication that a lot more of our healthcare professionals are being... You remember, they have also been working throughout the festive season. Some of them were supposed to go on leave right at the beginning of the year now. Uh, and the MEC met with the CEOs of the hospitals and the leadership of, of the department uh, to say that that's something we need to manage. The CEO was reporting to me that the management here has been able to talk to the healthcare workers who were supposed to be going on leave. You can imagine how tired and fatigued they would be. Because, and precisely because we had an earlier second wave than, than it was initially predicted in our modeling. And that second wave started essentially immediately when uh, young people returned from, uh, uh, from that rage event. That second wave started to, to, the numbers in our hospital started, so they couldn't release the healthcare workers who should have been, who could have been released in December, were busy treating patients, although the numbers were low. Yes, there are more healthcare workers who uh, who, who are now getting infected. The precise number I will give tomorrow. Uh, death, the, the, the fatality rate is much higher. In fact, it's double also uh, what it was. Uh, not, uh, there was a period where the fatality rate was very, was very stable uh, and moderate in Houghton province. But at the peak, the highest number of people we lost to COVID in one day at the peak in July was 200, uh, slightly over 200 people a day. Uh, at the moment, we are worried the numbers are increasing very, very fast, uh, but we are, we, are, we are still far from where the peak is. But uh, given the fact that all the numbers are doubling up, we are gearing up for a difficult time. And that's why we are calling on, on citizens uh, to continue to help us to support all these uh, measures that are in place. Uh, and I want to say to young people who defied, who literally defied and got, got out on a drinking spree in December blocking the roads, I want to say to those young people, although they were doing it for themselves, but they should know that uh, this is costly. And for everybody, every one of us, uh, uh, the, the Christmas party that may have happened, it is costly. But we need collaboration. Uh, we don't blame citizens. We cannot blame citizens. 
uh, we need collaboration, we need cooperation. Uh, the, the only way we will succeed is to combine all these measures. I must also say I'm very happy as the Premier that the Minister of Health has announced uh, that the, the country will be able to move much quicker on the vaccine, especially with regard to the first phase of vaccine, vaccine uh, the vaccination of the frontline workers. The, the, the infection rate, yes, is increasing. So I, I am very happy that the minister has announced uh, that there is much more speedy response to, to the vaccine issue. Uh, the procurement of the vaccine. As a province, we are already planning the rollout. Uh, we have a task team that is planning for the for the rollout of the vaccine, starting with phase one, all our healthcare workers. Uh, and, and of course, there are other frontline workers, uh, like the police officers, as you know, the schools are going to be opening. Uh, all that, uh, so we are pleased that there's work and there's agency in the area of uh, of securing a vaccine. So when we combine that with all the other measures uh, and ensuring that, uh, let me tell you, we would not uh, we would not support any proposal that the restrictions must be must be lifted. We will not support that. We as Houting, we are just at that point where uh, we are in the eye of the storm. We will not support lifting restrictions. Uh, but we will not also call for the closure of the economy. We will not support uh, that idea of uh, going to level five. Uh, so we want to call on citizens to cooperate. Let's make the measures that are there now to work best. Because we want the economy to be open, we will wait to hear what the president is going to say. But let's do those things that we ourselves can do. The MEC has been working throughout December uh, as our senior management team has been working throughout December, but uh, the, speed, the, the pace and the speed at which the pandemic is moving now is doubling every day. Uh, Alex Mitchley from News24. Could you maybe tell us what was discussed in the coordinating committee yesterday? As you said that uh, premiers were involved there. Uh, just could you give me a You mean the national? Yeah. Please wait for the president. All right. Wait for the president. Then, uh, I've spoken to some uh, uh, some of the healthcare workers on the ground here. But uh, whilst you have given a clear indication of why there's so many patients, it seems like there are more problems than meets the eye. There's uh, issues of not enough resuscitation equipment, uh, not enough PPE masks, linen for the patients, uh, like bedding. Um, the oxygen tanks are just everywhere and they're not uh, obviously not safe. Uh, I've had doctors say that uh, these things have been falling over, for, uh, possibly injuring people. Um, not enough uh, hands on deck. Uh, not enough hands on deck to look after the patients in the triage areas and also mixing confirmed patients with PUIs and the tents being uh, uh, having too many people as per what they're supposed to have. I don't know if we could get some uh, answers to those allegations, please. Okay, the MEC will deal with the PPE issue about the supplies at the province, and the CEO will just deal with the issue of uh, how they, they are managing this issue. But let me say, uh, as a matter of principle, that uh, the Provincial Command Council in Gauteng has been seized with the everyday assessment of the pandemic and we are giving all the necessary support including where the, the hospitals have come back to us to say we may need additional support with the with the nurses that were supposed to be leaving or community service doctors and nurses uh, whose, whose time has, uh, has ended now that they need to be brought back or we must keep them. All that is receiving our attention because it's a matter that uh, we, we, we treat with a great deal of urgency. On the resourcing side, including the supply of oxygen, this is a matter the national, I mean the provincial, the provincial department of health is this morning dealing, going to all the facilities just to make sure that there will be enough supply of oxygen. We, in Gauteng, we get oxygen from supply from Afrox. Uh, the, the department has developed additional measures to make sure that we never run short of uh, oxygen.
you know that uh, AFROX has been uh, dealing with uh, especially the provinces, the areas where the pressure was. That pressure is shifting here. We would like to ensure that they help uh, us to support uh, Houteng uh, because the pressure is less, especially in the Eastern Cape and uh, less in the Western Cape. Uh, but I would like the MEC and the CEO just to say something. She will talk about issues of clinical management and how the staff here is really trying its best. Uh, MEC? On the, issue, on the issue of the PPE, we are managing it uh, like we have a task team that is linked to all the, 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 the hospitals. And um, we are also managing the, the stock levels. When they order, they must indicate what is the stock at hand. And then so that the person who's issuing at the warehouse can be able to see the agency of issuing the PPE. And even this morning, we got a report from the CEO that they are having they don't have issues around PPE, but if maybe they, there's maybe one or two things that maybe the hospital did not order, I think the, the CEO might be able to take that up. But even yesterday, we had a meeting with all the CEOs of all the hospitals to make sure that we assess our, our plan, we assess our PPE availability, and there were no issues around issues of PPE. And maybe just to indicate that Something that we have also picked up is that the, the, the nurses and some of the doctors that are contracting the disease are outside the, the COVID uh, patient uh, nursing because we, we discovered that we are asking ourselves where did they contract uh, this uh, disease because we make sure that those that are working in COVID wards, they do have their PPE and full PPE for that matter. So I don't think that one is an issue. But I think uh, the CEO will be able to respond on the issues of uh, uh, clinical issues in the in the in the in the in the tent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, MC. Uh, like it has been said, I'm Dr. Matabo Materuda, the CEO of Steve Bukwanga Clinic Hospital. Just uh, to add on what the uh, MEC was saying about the PPE, the, the mask. Definitely have got enough masks that are appropriate. It's, it may be just a matter of preference because they come in different types. If I prefer an N95 and I'm being issued an FFF, FFP2, I may say I don't have a, a mask. But that mask is equally effective and it has been proven. I think it's a matter of preference. We've got enough masks in the hospital and I did avail the, the actual numbers to the Premier and the MEC. So that is not a worry. And then the matter of mixing positive confirmed and, uh, and, uh, and PUIs, it will happen because when they arrive, they are all PUIs. Yes, others will turn negative, others will be positive. So in the beginning, before the results, you get put together because you are all suspected cases. And once a, a case is confirmed, that patient get taken to the Tswani District Hospital. When earlier on, a uh, premier was counting the numbers, but I wanted the 95 is for general beds. And then we have got uh, 57 beds for critical care in the same building of Tswani District Hospital. And then we have got 14 of, of pediatrics, young ones, and then a 39 for pregnant women. Those, all those beds are in Chani district. That's what takes us to 210. Pressure, yes, we are under pressure, and the, the premier covered it nicely. And the, what is even more worrying is that uh, coming from all those patients, the people that are sick, like the first wave, the people that were sick and uh, at the verge of dying were elderly people and young people were recovering quickly somewhere were not even having symptoms. Now the people that we are admitting are younger people, it's worrying and it, it just point to us that uh, we have uh, 
we have relaxed as younger people and our appeal to the communities, younger people are needed. We still need you and you need to be extra careful because now this second wave is affecting even yourselves more, more than even the older people. I think older people are now accustomed to the regulations and the controls that are there. But younger people are, are clearly not adhering to the regulations and the controls that are there. Baba, you have the premier of uh, Gauteng, David Makura, at the Steve Biko Academic Hospital in Tswane this morning, addressing concerns about capacity in Gauteng. This particular facility has been reported to be overwhelmed by sheer numbers of COVID-19 patients. The premier listing a few of the interventions the province is undertaking to counter this, but conceding that facilities in the last seven days increasingly under pressure uh, from people returning from uh, holidays. The Premier also responding to answers there, saying uh, the province does not support the conversation about uh, the lifting of restrictions. But that being said, also saying that the province does not support a return to a full lockdown, level five lockdown. Also letting slip there, I don't know if you caught it, uh, that the president could be addressing the nation uh, today or tomorrow. I think he said today or tomorrow, kind of not sure there, but uh, I suppose that's something to look forward to. But the premier also uh, accompanied by the province's new health MEC, Dr. Noma Temba Macheti, who also also spoke about their improved streamlined uh, processes of managing how they bring out PPC. A lot being said there. We can't cover it all. We have to quickly go back to that basic etiquette.